Hello, we are here. Not Your Average Lives is bringing you a live show today. And this is my first time doing the show live, bloopers and all. So everybody, uh, I figure everybody has a heart. So if we have any bloopers, I have Kelly West joining me. And Kelly, I have gotten to know through a shared mastermind group we're in. We're both business owners, totally different fields. But I love her to death, and she is in my age. And that's actually one thing that's been really interesting for me, and I don't know about you, Kelly, but joining a group that has a lot of older people in it. Yeah. I'm really surprised when I started, when I went to the first event, I was looked around, I was like, wow, I don't feel like I'm around all millennials anymore. <laughs> right. But everybody in the group is so interesting and they actually inspired me to start this show and particularly the people in my demographic because they have a message and they're all doing something different that's wonderful and they have inspiring stories of change at midlife and Kelly is just another example and um, of, of people that are really, I like to say, up leveling their life and helping others. So Kelly in particular, her field is she's an oncology nurse. And I have a lot of questions for her because I think it's really a, a field that must be very hard. Um, but she and the nursing field in general, I think, is hard because it's a field of real service. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so, you know, major props to all the nurses out there. So if anybody is here watching and is a nurse, mm -hmm. yeah, like <laughs> smiley face, love, heart, whatever for you. Yeah. Um, but I'd like to know, and, and so what Kelly does in particular is, well, she's been obviously a nurse in the traditional nursing field, but she is actually moving into an area that where she has an online business supporting uh, people who are going through some sort of cancer, cancer struggle, um, and particularly those uh, adults who have children or grandchildren uh, mm -hmm. who are suffering from cancer. And I imagine that is really the hardest the hardest demographic because you you're talking about a a, a, a parent i mean it's one thing we have a you know something we're struggling with but when somebody we love more than anything in the world like our children is struggling mm -hmm. i can't i can't imagine yeah. so welcome first of all thank you thank you for having me laurie i'm so excited to be here you're welcome and so tell me first of all how did you get started and oh i always mm -hmm. like to say age because we should celebrate our age, and Kelly is just the big five zero. <laughs> We're in the new decade. <laughs> yeah. It was my best decade, so I'm like excited for you because it's going to be great. So, how did you actually get started, and how long have you been nursing? Yeah, so I have actually been a nurse for close to 25 years, which is crazy. Um, and the majority of that uh, has been in pediatric oncology. I currently am not practicing as a pediatric oncology nurse. However, I've done that for 17-ish of those 25 years. Um, right now, I still work with um, at a children's hospital, um, and I still work on another um, end of things, um, helping kids prevent infections from um, when they're in the hospital. But my love has always been with pediatric oncology. And in the last, I, I guess I started this journey of business and sort of online, actually in the health and wellness space about 2014 and started helping other nurses and colleagues of mine really up level their health and wellness. I was getting great results and feeling amazing. Um, and so I really loved that piece because it was then giving, it was getting back to taking care of others or working with others and helping um, others. And that I part I really, really loved. Um, but I knew there was more that I wanted to do. And I knew that there was still always this kind of naggingness to be part of that pediatric oncology world. And I still keep in contact with a lot of parents that I took care of their kids many years ago. And as we were talking and I was kind of interviewing them, really seeing how even, you know, gosh, five, 10, 15 years after their child's diagnosis, they were still a lot of times dealing with so much, you know, worry and anxiety and, and kind of like stress, um, post-traumatic stress symptoms, really. And at that point, you know, there's a lot of resources, of course, when um, your child's going through uh, the, the acute phase of their therapy. 
Um, but 10 years out, not so much, but they're still yet dealing with it, whether, you know, parent, grandparent at that time, whatever. Um, and so that's where I felt like there was that need um, and a place where I could help. So that's mm -hmm. where I'm really building um, my business up, working with clients in not only just pediatric cancer um, or pediatric oncology, but, you know, any parent that really has a, you know, child with a chronic illness or a life threatening illness um, and is looking for that support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so interesting because I remember when we were talking about this uh, and I, I was like, yeah, nobody really realizes the after effect. Even if your child has recovered, yeah, there is that. And I, I didn't share the story with you, but my daughter suffered from a a double pulmonary embolism Ooh, yeah. on the day before her 21st birthday, and she was rushed to the hospital, oh. and she almost died. And I had, I had like, I started getting anxiety attacks. Yeah. And I think, you know, people don't realize that mm -hmm. that it can really affect you me mentally. And I, mm -hmm. I think with cancer, like she recovered mm -hmm. and they, you know, she was able to get on medication that would prevent it. And like, you know, it, yeah. like the chances of her having it again, even though sometimes you're more susceptible to it, but like mm -hmm. with cancer, the fact that, you know, for like for five years too, yeah, you have that five year window. And then I think it's always there. Yeah. Totally. Uh, it, yeah. So that's totally. Really I think, you know, and that's the thing that it's, you know, it's, it never really goes away. Most parents that I've worked with and talked with, uh, it's just, it's just this always little bit under, underlying feeling um, and it never really goes away, even if their kids are doing great. And a lot of times their kids are like, you know, off at college doing fantastic. And they're like, what's your problem, mom? You know, like, why can't you just move on? And they're sitting there like, I can't move on. It's become their identity. It's become who a part of them, you know, that caretaker, of course, as moms, you do everything you can for your kids. And then when they're like, La -la, I'm doing fine, you know, you're like, wait a sec, what's my role now? So um, that's a big piece of the change um, at, that I see happening as well with some of them. Yeah. And so I bet it's a strain on a marriage as well. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I can tell you the percentage of, um, you know, parents that come in, you know, when they're a child um, and everybody's a different experiment. But, you know, the divorce rate, um, separation rate of parents that are going through, whether it's cancer or really any kind of life threatening illness um, is much higher than, you know, not going through that. So it definitely puts a strain on the families um, for sure. Now, is your program focused on women, parents, or female parents, or it, does it do for? Do yeah, I think you know, the majority of um, you know clients I've worked with are mostly moms. Um, I have had a dad or two, you know, be interested, and um, I've worked with them a little bit. I've known them, um, but yeah, definitely moms. I think because we we certainly connect um, on that level. Um, but I'm open to working with moms or dads, um, either either one. I think uh, women are more connectors, so yeah. especially in the online space when it comes to emotions. So, yeah, the like, dads are not so open uh, yeah. to what's still going on with them, and are um, and it's difficult to share. And I and I feel for them; they need just as much support. Um, and I love the dads that have opened up and being able to say, "Hey, this is where I'm at," and I could really still use some support. But um, it's it's yeah, it's definitely more a mom thing um, to to be able to open up like that. And I think it's interesting too that you started thinking about like you, you got into the online space in terms of business because yeah. you started doing health and fitness, which is exactly the same as me. Yeah. And then after feeling so good, I think that like, and that's why I I did this video that said uh, you know you need to change on the outside before you have the internal transformation because mm -hmm. everybody's talking about oh the change is starts on the inside. Yeah. And I'm like, well, kind of not because it started like because then you start feeling confident, mm -hmm. you start feeling like high energy and mm -hmm. like I want others to be feel like this. And you, I don't know. I think maybe maybe it's particularly because when we're in middle age, we're mm -hmm. feeling like a new resurgence. Yeah. Like of life. Totally. And by just getting involved in health and fitness, it was a pathway mm -hmm. to, like this blue light bulb moment of, of sorts. 100%. I mean, I think it's interesting how just going into that health and wellness and really starting to focus on yourself and your body and how it just taking care of yourself in that way 
totally changes your mindset too. When you are, you know, putting good food in your body and you're moving and, you know, that really just changes your whole mindset and, you know, such a shift with that. So yeah, I agree. I mean, it's just a, it's huge gateway. And I've seen so many women, you know, moms go through that, that same transition, you know, you get the body for, you know, not the body necessarily, but you get, you know, moving and you get um, even, even if it's just a little bit of success, but start feeling amazing. Like even just moving and getting those endorphins going, how that changes our brains. Right. So um, I, I a hundred percent agree. Yeah. And I, I also, and this is, this is sad, but I see how it happens is that as a health and fitness coach, I found that I had so many nurses that because Mm -hmm. they were caring about other people and they Mm -hmm. weren't caring about themselves. So Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I can definitely see where kind of you started to see, Oh, I need to take care of myself. Totally. Well, even as I, as I was transitioning over to more looking at, you know, support and emotional resiliency training and, and all of that, you know, the nurses are absolutely a piece of that as well, because, you know, certainly, you know, being in that uh, healthcare field, I always had a lot of nurses um, come to me because of the health and wellness piece, and then still see them come because of the resiliency and support, because it's interesting, I was at a conference last fall, um, and there was a room of about a 1000 nurses that were um, there and they asked the question, you know, how many nurses, how many in this room are either looking at moving on from uh, taking care of patients at the bedside or already have? And I would say probably about 80% of that room or more um, raised their hand. So it was really, you know, that showing how much there's so much burnout and so much stress. And there are programs, but I don't know, again, how many nurses are tapping into that, Mm -hmm. just like how many parents are tapping into that. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes it feels like it's hard to get away to do something like even going to a gym or going to, you know, a support group or anything like that. And so I think that online piece is a lot more convenient for people in a lot of ways that they can reach out at their convenience and get training, get support um, when it's convenient for them. And I think that's what I love about this opportunity as well. That we yeah. Yes. Yes. It is a job of, you know, kind of, yeah. I, I think the more experience you get, the more flexibility, but it's for a long time. It's not at all. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And, totally. Yeah. Um, I, I being in the tech, technology field, I've been very fortunate because I've worked in corporate companies where, you know, you, especially since we've had the internet where, you know, I can work from home today Yeah, and you can't do that in nursing, right? Or, you know, I can wear jeans to work. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. So, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's great. Yeah. So, so tell me, I, one of the things um, I'm curious about is because your support is important. So, mm-hmm that support network is, is amazing, I think. Um, but you, it sounds like you blend in. Like, I think that to me, if somebody, if I was really worried about my child who was sick, mm-hmm. I would like totally neglect myself. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> that I would just like nothing mattered but that child. Right. So you kind of try to help people with like focusing on themselves as they're going through that as well. Yeah, I think, you know, it's really interesting at different, everybody's at different stages. And um, sometimes when you're in that acute, you know, you're, you know, you got to focus on your kids at that acute time, just like you said, when your daughter was going through that, or when, you know, kids are first diagnosed, there's a lot going on, and you're still learning. Absolutely. Those are, I think, some times you do focus on them. Um, Absolutely. But I think, then there does get to be a point, um, even with, you know, uh, the cancer parents that I've worked with, that, you know, things start to get kind of into a phase of we've got this, we're kind of going down our, you know, what's going on, we're not in the acute scariness right now. Um, But there's still a lot that's coming up for us. And that's the time that I think, you know, is better for them to be able to tap in if they know about it. I've talked to parents that, um, you know, they're, child was in the hospital for maybe seven months, eight months, and didn't realize until two years later, there was even support available for them at the location they were being treated at. Um, Yet if they were able to, you know, they're on their phones all the time, they're, you know, sitting in their kid's room and, and trying to pass the time or, or do things. And so, you know, if they are able to tap into something, excuse me, that I can, you know, that they can 
get some support right then and there, um, that they say that that would be helpful as well. And of course, you know, those parents that are, you know, the kids are doing great, um, or it's five years, 10 years out, and they're still really having that struggle, but their kid is, you know, doing great and moving on. Um, how do we tap into that? So um, there's different stages, and I think it's different for everybody, but helping them know that this resource is available for them, as, you know, there are many resources um, available out there, but that they can, you know, choose what works best for them. Right. So, so how do you feel like, I like to ask what, like psychologically, a lot of people are thinking that they should be slowing down or they think, well, I should have it all together by now. You know, I'm, I'm in my fifties. Yeah. Um, why don't I know what I want to do yet? Right. <laughs> so right. what kind of advice can you give to people like that? Gosh, you know, I, I have always been a dreamer, I say, because um, it's just now it's just been a part of me. So just because I, you know, even my 40s, now that I've hit my 50s, like it's just a piece of me that I'm like, we don't have to. And, and I will agree that I think there there have been times that I've been like, oh, I'm too late to the game. I'm too you know old to do this, whatever. But then I look like I used to say that in my 20s, I was too young. So when is the right age, really? So, you know, you just move on. It is what it is. And um, we're still young, we're still vibrant, you know, and, you know, you can always just jump in and try new things. I think it's, you know, great that I've been able to, you know, tap into another piece of, I don't know, this online world that I discovered, I guess, um, and be able to feel like I'm providing such value to people when I've been working with clients or they've reached out to me, that it's been um, very rewarding and very fulfilling. And just another way, I always say nursing is a great profession and that there's a lot of different things you can do within the profession. But even this is just another avenue um, wow. that you can take and create something. So it age really is irrelevant. And, um, you know, if you feel like it's in you and, you know, you want to just provide value and serve others in whatever way I say, go for it. Like it's yeah. totally, you know, awesome. Yeah. When I was doing the intro, writing the intro for this, just mm -hmm. an audio intro for my show, I actually said that we should, the people that are our age should start thinking about their age as their superpower Yeah. instead of letting it hold them back because like all the wisdom, all the experience, right. all the knowledge, all the stuff that we think yeah. we, we dismiss that because we just think, oh, age, too old, too, not enough time left. And honestly, right. we don't know how much time we have left. So yeah. uh, we could have more, a lot more time left than a 25 year old walking around with like a big, big Absolutely. year plan. So, or 10 year plan. Yeah. I just like to do five year right. plans. I don't want to do 10 year plans. So we're going to do five. <laughs> so true. So true. So yeah. one thing I, I like to ask all my guests is um, what were or are your technology skills? Because I think that, let people, you know, people get held back from that. Yeah. yeah. You know, I would say it's interesting because I would say I'm not a tech person at all, but I'm also a person who is pretty stubborn and doesn't give up. So I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> um, and so whether I like, you know, whatever I have to do to figure that out, whether I, you know, just look online and figure it out or phone a friend or whatever I need to do, I'm going to, you know, sit there at it. So I feel like I'm pretty persistent with that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, naturally, I wouldn't say I'm a tech person, but it's all it all is out there it all is you know available for us to figure out mm -hmm. um and that's why i love you know being in the um group that we are in together is being able to connect with other people that are doing this because it, you have that great connection and just say hey have you tried this and what do you you know recommend or what's worked for you and and being able to have that support network um together has been fabulous and so mm -hmm. so 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 um amazing for me and helpful for me and my group yeah, I agree. I'd like to know when you first, because I, my, based on my experience, and I don't know why I didn't start sooner, but last year in October, mm -hmm. when I signed up for James Mastermind, mm -hmm. I never had my own coach. Never, never had my own coach. And mm -hmm. I look back and I think other, you know, if you think of a, maybe a school teacher mentor or something, mm -hmm. 
but think how long ago that was or oh, yeah. maybe a, 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 a boss in a job, but that's specific. That That's not about your life. That's yeah. about corporate objectives. Mm -hmm. so I'm like what? Like, I just want to, I want to preach that to people. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, even if you don't know what you want to do, find a coach that you connect with that you yeah. like somebody that you kind of can relate to yeah. and, and help them guide you. It's like so worth it to oh, find yeah. somebody who, who knows more than you and can kind of like light the way for, you know, mm -hmm. for, for your path, because, um, it's, that's been probably the most, the priceless part, you know, it's like, how yeah. much would you pay yeah. for a coach? That's, <laughs> like, that's kind of priceless, I think. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. A hundred percent. Because um, I first got actually a coach. Um, my first coach I invested in probably six months before I joined the group. Um, and it was a huge investment. It was like something I'd never done before, but it was also so amazing because like you said, you know, having a boss at a job is about their objectives. Um versus your life objectives and really working through, you know, the things and, and focus on unlike, you know, and I love and I will promote therapy to people all day long because I think that is a super um, amazing and helpful thing that more people need to do as well. But coaching is so much more specific to just looking at where do you want to go forward? Um, let's not, you know, focus on, you know, the last 20, 30 years of your life, because that's really not getting us anywhere. It's not getting us making progress. It, you know, whatever was in our past was in our past. And let's look at where we want to move forward in the future. And so it was so such a faster transition working with a coach to yeah. kind of jump forward in my growth. Um, and then working with James, you know, just up leveled that even more. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's totally amazing. You, I, I love that. I, I think that's the best description of, that I've heard is it's a way forward instead mm -hmm. of trying to like understand and identify what happened in the past. And just, yeah. um, so why, just like what made you, was it something you saw online or what was it that made you take that step? You, you knew you needed. Initially, yeah. You know, it was, uh, you know, I just feel like, you know, the universe just puts things in my lap at different times. And I had um, been doing some courses online and connected with this person who I didn't even know was coaching at the time. And we just started chatting and I was just trying to figure out my way still. And she was like, hey, you know, let's jump on a call. So we chatted with each other um, and really connected and just decided to give that a whirl. So you know, sometimes you just got to make the leap. Like I love like what James says all the time is, you know, leap and the net will appear. And I've fully embraced that um, several times in the last 18 months um, and have just made that leap and trusted that for whatever reason, this is coming into my life for a purpose. And so I've, you know, made those leaps and I've never regretted it. Like it's been amazing for my life. So. Yeah. yeah. If you had asked me probably like five or six years ago, if I, I, I liked learning, I would have said no, because it was the traditional model that I didn't yeah. like. And it was because every single course I took was not what I really wanted to do. Yeah. Nowadays, it, it's more, I think there's, there's more opportunity for people to, to learn in different ways mm -hmm. um, and more uh, ways to find kind of, Oh, how do I figure out what I want to do? I, there's more mm -hmm. openness. Like, like you can like job, you can go to somebody's job and intern like now yeah. um, where you really couldn't do that before. So yeah. I just went into what my parents and then I did it mm -hmm. for like a couple of months. Cause I was a substitute teacher when my parents were teachers and I hated it. So yeah. I, I learned that before I, I got my degree. So yeah. I quit school and then became a waitress and then took the roundabout way, fell into technology, but still it wasn't. And so I, I like on the job learning yeah. a lot. And mm -hmm. I feel like the online space has given me a, now I know that I'm a, I'm, I'm a curiosity. I'm so curious. I mm -hmm. like love to learn new things. And I think that keeps us young. Mm -hmm. I think it keeps us vital. I think it keeps us, um, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I, I, anything I would like to say to, to my audience, um, 
which may, you made me think of is I think we, we, we need to continue to expose ourselves to new things mm -hmm. and, and learn and challenge ourselves to keep us young. A hundred percent. I think, um, I love that quote by Tony Robbins, I think, um, says, you know, if we're not, um, growing, we're dying. Um, and at the same way, like, you know, I have a couple of degrees and it's, you know, it's that traditional sense, but I have always grown and learned more no matter what I'm doing. If I'm just attending a conference or going to, you know, a, a corporate event or, you know, learning online or whatever, like I learn better the same way. Um, just being curious and saying, Hey, you know, asking those questions and figuring out, um, as I go. And so, um, yeah, totally get that. Yeah. I love that. So the coaching thing has been really key for me. And then the, the, the networking, I mean, and mm -hmm. I, if it's whatever you need in terms of support, yeah. Whether if you're growing a business, <clears throat> network with other business owners. Mm -hmm. If you're tr trying to, you know, help your child through cancer, find a network of yeah. people who are going through the same thing. Totally. If you're trying to get in shape, find a network of people who are trying to do the same thing. If yeah. you're whatever you're trying to do, if you're trying to learn how to do a triathlon, you know, yeah. try to do it like our friends at our group. So I just think that the the whole net that a lot of people kind of dismiss too how important that is. And mm -hmm. after experiencing it, it's like it's the people that I've been around have said it's like the quote, which you, the quote you just said reminded me of it is if you're the smartest person in the room, find a new room. Yeah. So yeah. right. Yeah. If you're right. answering all the questions, then go find a new room. Unless right. you're right. Exactly. Well, I think as humans we're just built for connection. So you know, that's where, you know, ha having those groups that have like, you know, like minded, um, you know, whatever, whether it's health and wellness, whether it's business, whether it's um, emotional, you know, resiliency, whatever, you know, finding that community that really gets you finding your yeah. job. Um, yeah. So key. So important. Yeah. And you were staying in an Airbnb with people that you didn't know a year ago. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. So cool. yeah. Yeah. Just that's so, yeah. I was just like, yeah, that's awesome. That's so fun. Yeah. All right. um, oh, I love this question. What has been your most inspiring client story? Oh, gosh. Stories, um, stories are so amazing. And you said that people keep in touch with you. Yeah. They yeah. Love, I love to hear stories of. Right. Um, gosh, I think uh, probably my most recent um, story that I love is um, it actually was the kind of the catalyst for moving me into this whole business world and getting back into supporting uh, cancer families is a very good friend of ours that actually lives on our block. Our kids grew up together um, and they're both 21. And last year he got diagnosed with leukemia mm. and it was totally a shock for us because I had lived in that world, you know, as a nurse for so many years. And then to have my friend say, hey, you know, Logan's got leukemia. And it was like very surreal, um, very scary, very surreal. Um, but I just like jumped in immediately and, you know, did what I needed to do to kind of help them um, on the other end of things. So being their support, being their kind of bridge to understand this whole new world of theirs because um, they were not healthcare people at all. Um, and so, you know, we talk about this all the time, how, and, and I think that happens a lot with families um, when they go through something like that is it certainly changes you. You certainly grow a lot from it. Um, but she'll say all the time that she couldn't have gone through that year without me because we really, um, you know, I was there to try to be as real as I could with her. I didn't try to sugarcoat a lot of things. And so if there was, um, you know, something that the you know hospital, the doctors were telling her or she was hearing or not quite. Under, and I knew she wasn't quite understanding. It's like, here's the reality. Let's you know talk about what we can do, um, what's reality and what is also hopeful. And let's just keep moving on like we don't need to be stuck in what we've been told necessarily as, you know, outcomes or percentages, all those kind of things, because everybody's an experiment of one. But um, how can we um, get past, you know, get past this and still be strong for him and um, do every whatever we need to do? And then even beyond that, now that he's doing amazing, um, you know, just seeing, you know, we've had a lot of conversations about how to 
heal now and change kind of that thought process because she still gets super triggered um, with text messages and things that go off that, you know, oh my gosh, what's on the other end of that? And so how can we really look at reprogramming that wiring that got wired because of this, because we all, our brains get wired when we have traumatic events and whether we call it a traumatic event or not, that our child got cancer in my mind, I feel like it is because it's something very, you know, distressing to us, even if, you know, it's not us directly having the cancer. So, um, you know, how can we, we, we look at reprogramming and rewiring that piece of her brain that got so triggered during this so that she can just rest and not, um, you know, be up half the night listening to dings on text messages and, and worrying wow. that something the shoe is going to drop, you know, yeah. so that's been uh, one yeah. of the greatest things to just see her make that progress and, you know, be able to um, move, you know, kind of move forward that. And, and it's not an overnight thing, um, but it's something that she's been also very willing to go through that process. So. Yeah. And isn't it interesting how, what at the time seems like one of the worst things yeah. ends up turning you to like in a direction that I think you're meant to be in. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and in um, hindsight, it's like, wow, you know, the valley, um, but then there's the, you know, the, the, you know, you get to the mountain and it's beautiful. So yeah, totally. totally. So speaking of um, that, we kind of, you talked a little bit about mindset, but mindset of your clients. So mm -hmm. how has mindset helped you as you've gone and there, you know, there's lots of struggle yeah. in doing this and lots of fear, yeah. and lots of like, uh, you know, can I do this? Yeah. You know, is, is this uh, really, you know, am I just nuts? Yeah. <laughs> totally. Well, again, you know, like it is, um, you know, being an entrepreneur and building a business and doing this, especially online, it, it is scary. You know, there's a lot of stuff that comes up. I think no matter how much, um, you know, I feel like I've really worked on building a lot of my own resiliency and my emotional awareness and all of that but there's still stuff that comes up you know and that's i think just a natural human thing um but i think when we are willing to take that step and like we were talking about before like just investing in a coach or having that person um that community around you it reminds me of the story of the hero's journey where you know you have um you know this this journey that you're going through basically into the depths of despair depths of um this dungeon and to fight these dragons and you know but there's this um person that kind of guide that helps you along the way and helps you kind of through that whole process and up into the other side like we were saying and i just feel like that is so true of finding that um, coach or finding that um, mastermind or, you know, a group that is just your tribe that gets you and can say, hey, I see, you know, you're really struggling here. Let me pull you along and help you and vice versa. And then we do it for each other. So mm -hmm. I think that is um, just helpful, whether we're coaching others when we're coaching our clients and whatever entity or business we are, whether it's health and wellness or emotional, you know, trauma, resiliency, um, or whatever um, aspect we're in, to have that um, guide and, you know, along the way as we go, because it is scary. Um, you know, we are human and we're always going to yeah. be a little bit afraid, but it's also saying, hey, I'm willing to take that leap and I'm going to have this person that, you know, can help me along the way. Yeah. Yeah, and it's what it, I, I know you're familiar with Jim Fortin. What does he say? Yeah. They were beings having a human experience. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. I think for me, I've really connected with you know the twelve universal laws mm -hmm. and how the universe is always working for us, not against us, and how mindset has like when you think negative, you actually attract that. And you know, so much of that stuff that I never even, I was always, I loved the law of attraction when it came out. Oh, I, was yeah. Oprah. I loved Oprah. Oh my God. I watched her. All the time. Taped her shows. When you <laughs> came Same. I was like so sad when her show went off the air. I was like, oh my God. My aunt was actually on her show. Really? Oh, that's awesome. They had, had a love reconnection story. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Anyways. So I, dig I digress, um, but yeah, so she, I remember she, I think she talked about the secret and she had um, a webinar series and this was before I, even webinars were a thing really. Uh -huh. And she did it on the book that he had, um, Eckhart Tolle's book, 
Oh, right. um, a, a new world, I think, is the way, and that those just so audience knows this, they are on each chapter is on YouTube, so you can Google a new world chapter one or whatever. But it's there's ten okay. chapters, and she did a webinar every Monday night, and she and him got on and broke down and talked about the chapter, oh. and it's almost like you know, finding James and, and, and following his podcast, because that was mm -hmm. kind of my stepping stone into mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Um, it kind of like, was like, Oh yeah, that's that Oprah. For, Oprah was the like, Hmm. Hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and then it's kind of slowly been in the back of my mind. And mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, there's something about this whole law of attraction and the yeah. other universal laws and how, and then you start die, you know, looking back at your life and how many things that you didn't want to happen to you yeah. happen because you are actually in your mind thinking maybe negative thoughts about them. And even if they're, whether they're negative or positive, they come to you, you know? Right. Yeah. And, and so that has not just mindset, but kind of this whole understanding of how, you know, like who our creator, everybody has a different version of who that is, but how that plays into your role being here and what we're doing and the path we're supposed to be taking. So that's going probably a little bit deeper than <laughs> okay, I love all that stuff. we can go on and on. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love, I mean, it's funny. You know, I look back at my path, gosh, I had um, actually thought about doing, you know, creating my own business and all of this back in the nineties, I was following Tony Robbins a lot and um, had thought about that. And that was like, the internet was like a, not even barely a thing then. And um, so it wasn't even much that it was like, even just doing like, you know, building it kind of without the internet at that time. And then, you know, had kids and got, you know, busy with life and all of that kind of stuff. But again, you know, I was always into, you know, Oprah or anything like, that was just uplifting and, um, you know, just helped you think differently. I don't know. I just always was drawn to that sort of thing. So yeah, when the secret came out, love, love, love that. Um, and you know, just anything around that. And I see her interviewing Eckhart Tolle all the time. Um, yeah. And, you know, yeah, yeah. He, he is, he's somebody who really, he had kind of like this, like he was suicidal and he had this like breakdown moment. I don't mm. know if you ever follow Elizabeth, um, what's her Gilbert? Of oh. we pray and love. She kind of had a similar experience, yeah. but yeah, he's just very, I, I, I think he's way, way, whoa, you know, but like yeah. as she was talking to him and interviewing him, mm -hmm. like kind of understand him. Yeah. Um, I, that, that webinar series was when I was going through kind of like my, well, I think at the time I was still married, but mm -hmm. it helped me a lot through a really bad and I, I learned a lot. It really helped me at the core. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think all that stuff and, you know, doing a little inward work is, mm -hmm. is good for all of us. So um, what are you most looking forward to in 2020? Oh, gosh. I am looking forward to, oh, gosh, I have so many things in my brain and things I'm like, wanting to do and bring to life. Um, so that's all like, very exciting. Um, I think the biggest thing is really just continued growth. Um, I always do a vision board at the beginning of the year. I've been doing that the last several years. Um, and I always pick a word at the beginning of the year. This year was growth. And holy cow, I always said, I think I posted this recently on my Facebook page. It was like when you be careful on what you ask for or put down as your word for the year and what comes about because holy moly, the growth journey I've been on this year has been like skyrocketing. So um, I'm appreciative of that. I'm super grateful of that. And I don't want that to end just because the year ends and I maybe pick a new word. So um, I am excited for the growth journey I'm on, um, not only personally, but in my business and being able to be out there serving others and helping these parents that um, I just know are searching still, you know, in a lot of um, areas for that help. Right. Great. All right. Well, let's wrap it up. I, you know, we've gone longer than 30 minutes, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm all for if it's yeah. like interesting conversation, let's yeah. keep going. I can talk forever. Um, all right. So tell me where, and, and actually one of the reasons I wanted to get on live with Kelly and most of my, my interviews are going to be recorded, but I, I will occasionally go live and, um, with my with my guests who are brave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and because the live format is well, some people still can't can't like they're scared about it but mm. um yeah so i want to know she is doing um i just want you to tell people where they can find you but she is doing a webinar on wednesday night and she's opening up uh her program and so um I'm not exactly sure what format your webinar is in, but if you just want to share that quickly and her link on how to, if you are interested in joining that webinar, I'll put it in the comments below or maybe even in the description. I think I can put it in the description, yeah. um, but I'll put it everywhere um, okay. so people can find you. But also I want people to please share this with anybody that you know that could find or need support in this area because mm -hmm. I thought Kelly's message was like so important to get out there mm -hmm. and yeah. I just wanted to have her here to because people don't know about this stuff people don't no. know that there's there's programs that can help them right. so tell me exactly you know what what's your format of your webinar is it do you teach something on it or yeah so I have um it's about a 60 minute webinar or so 45 to 60 minutes and it's called raise your resiliency so it's the sixth step to learn how to um you know kind of overcome um any obstacle and so we go through a few um of those and you know just so it's a free training um that i want to provide a lot of value there's some giveaways that i'm um and and pdfs that i'll have for those that are on the webinar and so um, i'll have those available and then my program um the resilient soul formula will open up um, for the next week after that. So I'm excited um, for new students to come in and really just to get that support for people that are really still searching for what works for them. Yeah. Um, and if this can work for somebody, I'm I'm all for it. I'm happy to yeah. have you there and see if it works. Resiliency, what? You said it really fast. So the, raise, um, the webinar is Raise Your Resiliency and then my program is the Resilient Soul Formula. Resilient Soul Formula. Oh, I love that. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you, Lori, so much for having me. I so okay. appreciate it. All right. And we'll see each other in the group. We have a yeah. Facebook group for all those people. Those unlucky people who aren't a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.